You boys ride for the pass, and I'll head for the border. Did he get you, Brad? I'm all right. Get me back to the post right away. I'm glad to see you fit for duty again, Mason. I've uh, granted your request. Thank you, sir. The man who murdered old LeGrew, the trapper, is the same one who shot you. This is all we have to work on. Uh, you won't find him on this side of the line, somewhere in the States place to look. And once there, you will be on your own. I'll leave now, sir. That is, as soon as I change my uniform. Good luck, Mason. You will get your man. I won't come back till I do, sir. That's the spirit. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Long years. Huh? Yeah. When I ain't long years, you ain't. Come on. 
Too bad you can't talk back to me. All you do is just wiggle your ears. Maybe you're as lonesome as me. If you could only talk. Smells like food. Let's see how welcome we are. you, mister. Well, that's no way to welcome a stranger. Look what you went and done. And that was the last of my bacon. Cheer up, partner. That might be the last of yours. But I've got plenty in my saddlebag. And being that you've got the fire made and the coffee boiling, I'll supply the rest of the dinner. Not a sign of him. You know, that young scamp has disappeared as completely as some of our horses. But when I get a hold of him, I'll, uh... You won't do anything of the kind, Dad. You can't blame him for running away. And besides, when he's hungry, he'll come home. Yes, in the meantime, cause me to lose a lot of sleep wondering where he is. I don't suppose you ever ran away when you were a boy, did you, Dad? Well, now, uh, that was different. But when I get a hold of Andy, Eddie, hitch up the buckboard. I'm going into town. All right. You can come along with me if you want to, Marion. All right, Dad. Go ahead now. Finish your yarn. Why did you run away from your folks? Well, they ain't my folks. I've been living with my Uncle Luke Kirby and my cousin Marion. I ain't got no folks other than them. All they do is raise horses, and all I see is horses, and I get sick of looking at horses. That's why you like mules. You just trail on back with me. I'm heading for town. And as soon as I get located, we'll go out to your uncle's ranch, and you better stay there if you know what's good for you. Let's break camp. Come on. Thank <laughs> you.
We make good pieces, we're going to see the boys and take out a drink. Ah, good <laughs> What luck? Ah, we have much luck. On the east side of the range, we find 200 heads of the good horses. <laughs> good work. Where are they now? Oh, my friend, you should ask me such a question. The horses now are across the line. And by this time, tomorrow, they'll be so far away, nobody will ever find them no more. <laughs> right. <laughs> Empty. Come on, let's go out. The treats are out, mate. Right. <laughs> we maybe get drunk this time. <laughs> it's empty, Frank. Let's have a new deal. Right. <laughs> Private stuff. Yeah. Uh, let's have the farm up. There you are. Yes. Well, Marsh, you've certainly earned this. We all take a drink. <laughs> at the east end of your range again. They cornered and drove off about 200 head. I was alone, so I couldn't do anything to stop it. You get back to the ranch and tell the boys to keep their eyes on the rest of the stock. We'll head for town and get the marshal on this. Going out to rank this afternoon, Tom? Well, I think idea, Bill. Because I know when my uncle gets a hold of me, he's going to wham me. <laughs> well, maybe you got it coming to you, Andy. But I'll talk to him. I'll hold you, team, Mr. Kirby. All right, thank you. Right. <laughs> There's the young scamp. You go get him, Marion. I've got to see the marshal. Now you have done it. Wait a minute. You good for nothing little tramp. I ain't no tramp, am I? No, sir. I mean, no, ma'am. He's no tramp. At least he... he didn't strike me that way. This is the third time you've run away from home, Auntie Talbot. And you're sure going to catch it. All right. All right. Marion, this is my friend Bill Mason. Marion Kirby. How do you do? How do you do, Miss, Miss Marion? He's forever running away, and Dad has enough worries. You know, they've just driven off another band of our horses. Oh. They? Who? Well, we're not sure, but uh, we think it's Calhoun's men. Oh. I see. Marshal, this thing has got to stop. I've lost close to 500 head of horses the last year, and I'm not the only rancher who's lost stock. Something's got to be done about it. We got to them six months ago. Yes, you hung them, but that didn't stop the horse eating any. Now, there's only one way you'll stop this, Marshal, and that's to get the ringleader and give him the short end of a rope. And if you don't take action, I'll organize a vigilante committee. 
We're not raising horses in this country for thieves to make away with. Well, as we say one thing, this fella he raises mighty good horses. <laughs> Como que son los mejores que viste desde que vine de México. <laughs> Hello, Dad. This is Mr. Mason. He brought Andy home. Glad to know you. I'm a debtor, sir. How do you do? And when I get you home, you're going to get it. Well, if uh, you'll excuse me, I kind of promised him if he'd come home with me that you wouldn't give it to him. Of course, I uh, realize that he has it coming to him. Well, no harm done. We'll pass it this time. But glad to know you, and thanks again. If you ever get lonesome, why, well, drop out the ranch to see us. We live close to town. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Kirby is right. This horse dealer has got to stop. It's either a case of the horsemen and cattlemen owning this country, or the horse thieves. It can't be both. You're right. Uh, we'll form a vigilantes committee, and we'll do it now. Maybe you could direct me where I could find quarters for myself and horses. I have two of them. Well, I say, young fella, you can keep your horses in my stable back of my office across the street. Uh, thank you. And the uh, proprietor here will put you up in the cantina. We got a room right at the head of the stairs. Fine. I'll move in now if you don't mind. Go ahead. The door is open. You stay right here with Miriam. I have some shopping to do. And when we get ready to go home, you'd better follow us, not try to run away again. Say, did you tell Bill where we lived and how to get there? No, I didn't. Did you? See? You're just like all girls. Why, Andy Talbot. Bill! Bill! Oh, I'm awful sorry. Sir? Are you hurt, Andy? I don't think so. You'll apologize to the boy. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> We'll settle this later, mister, when we're alone. Suits me any time. There you come. Gee, I'm sorry, Bill. I came to tell you how to get to our ranch, in case you didn't know. We live two miles out in the border range. Thanks, Andy. I'll be seeing you soon. I wonder. What did you say? Nothing. I just wonder. We don't aim to take the law out of your hands, Marshal. But something has to be done. No, on the other hand, by forming this committee... We aim to cooperate with you. We intend to clean up this territory and make it possible for a man's horses and cattle to range in safety. Well, 
holding a figure and putting in charge of this committee. Well, we, we don't know. We want to get a man that's not afraid of Calhoun and his crowd. <laughs> There's only one man in this town I've seen during the last six months that wasn't afraid of Calhoun and his crowd. Well, who do you mean? I mean the young stranger up there. Oh, Mason. Yeah. Can they call me? We were just speaking about you. Yeah? Say, uh, do you know who it was you hit the other day? I haven't the least idea. That was Calhoun, the noted bad man around here. Now, we suspected him and his gang of horse stealing, but we haven't been able to pin anything on them. Well, what's that got to do with me? We're forming a vigilante committee, Mr. Mason. And you're the only man that's had the nerve to stand up against Calhoun. Now, we'd like to know if you'd head this committee. Before you say yes, let me warn you. It's going to be a hard job. I'll accept under one condition, gentlemen. That I have my own way. You accept the job, and you're not afraid of Calhoun? I accept, and I don't think I'm afraid of Calhoun. Good. That's fine. Right. Right. Thank you. Sir. Now, let's see. You stand, you stand here. Now, you're Calhoun. I'm, I'm here, see. I'm myself. But now I'm Bill Mason, see. And I'm still back. Then, and Bill goes like this. And that's me. And then he goes, bam! And you should have seen Calhoun right down in the corner. Then, then what happened? Well, then Bill stands back, and, and Calhoun got up. Then he slams him again. And oh, him again. Stop, oh. stop, Andy. Don't come so close. Oh, I didn't even <laughs> touch you. Yeah. And then Bill got going like this. Slam! And boy, did Calhoun take it. I was looking for your father. I rapped, but I guess you didn't hear me. Father's in the Grande. Oh, I must have missed him. I wanted to see if he'd sell me some horses. Well, I really couldn't tell you about that. You'd have to see him yourself. Oh, I see. I take it these horses out here on the ranch are yours. Yes, those are our horses. And they've got our brand on them, too. Hmm. I suppose you don't mind if I wait for your father, do you? No, no, not at all. Come right in. Thanks. Sorry about that incident the other day, young fellow. I didn't mean to hurt you. You didn't hurt me half as much as Bill Mason did you. Oh, that was just a misunderstanding. I'll explain that to Mason sometime. I would if I was you. What you need is a darn good licking. Senor, come quick. Hey, what are you doing with one of my men? I 
I didn't know who he belonged to. But we certainly found him in bad company. The old Tony Moose. At the end of a rope, mister. No other way. We'd like to have your father come out and identify some horses, sir. But this fellow is driving off. Why, father's in the Grande. Oh. Well, just tell him that we'll take the prisoner back to town. And if he has time, we'd like to have him come down and take a look at him. All right, I'll do that. Thanks. If you've got any defense to offer for this fellow, you better make it quick, because we won't keep him much longer than overnight. take no chances. Our first move will be to tell the vigilantes and Bill Mason are looking for him. We'll make a clean up of the range. We'll corner every horse within the area of 20 miles. Swing them into a band and head them across the border. <laughs> when do we start? Tonight. Ah, we go tonight, huh? Yes, if we don't, they'll string him up. Daybreak tomorrow sees us round up every horse, brand or no brand. This will be our last haul here. Come on, let's get going. Well, here's the first of them. This fellow and five others were running off a string of horses, and we challenged them. They opened fire and took it on the run. But this fellow wasn't quick enough. You've got to prove we are stealing them, mister. I'm a cowhand. We was rounding up them horses and separating them from our own when you come along. I never knew that you or any of the gang that you traveled with ever owned any horses. I'll string him up. Why waste any more time? I'll get a rope. There be no rope needed. I was handed the job of cleaning up this town. I'm going to do it my way. And the first one that passes a rope here will be met by a bullet. Step up, gents. Come on. We want to use that spare room of yours, Frank. You see, we ain't never had no jail here. Of course you can use it, Marshal. Ain't been used for anything much except card room, store room, or anything the boys want to make of it. I guess this will hold him. Uh, 
That's got him. Here's the key, Marshal. You take care of it. Okay, Marshal. Well, that's a good start, Bill. Thank you, Marshal. What's your pleasure, gentlemen? I've had a little liquor. I'm just here to warn you to give Dwyer a fair trial. He'll get the same trial any other man would get charged with the same offense. Horse stealing is a capital crime in this territory. I wasn't talking to you. You don't seem to be running this game now. He's not. I am. Let me tell you that if another horse leaves this grazing ground, we're going to have a roundup that'll be talked from here to the Canadian border. Did you ever hear of Canada? I see you lost the charm of your watch chain. Well, I never owned a watch charm. And Canada's a long ways off. Canada is a lot closer than you think, Mr. Calhoun. Have a drink, boys. Keep that door closed and don't let anyone in or out. I got this. I'll see that he gets something to eat. That's what we've been waiting for. Now's our time. You head for the lower range and tell the boys how to start their drive. Get every horse you can see. Sam, Jake, you stay with me. You're a Maris. I'm counting on you to see that the Kirby's don't get out of that house of theirs and give the alarm. You understand? With you, senor. The rest of you boys better stay with me, too. When the Grand wakes up in the morning, they'll find we own the town. Yeah, but Calhoun, you seem to be forgetting that fellow Mason and the vigilantes. I'm not forgetting Mason or the vigilantes. Mason, you leave him to me. Come on, let's get going. Tell the boys to get started and get every horse they can see. Okay. Sir.
Greetings, mi amigo. I have business with you this morning, senor. Well, after breakfast, a better time. Not now. Ah, I'm very sorry. But my business, he will not wait. So, maybe it's best you come in the house now, huh? You will come along and keep us company, eh? Andale, vente. Adentro. <laughs> Very sorry, senor. But we don't wish to hurt you. And our business, it will not take long. No, it will not take long. Oh, you don't believe, eh? Ah, give a look. You'll swing for this. <laughs> Maybe so. Who can tell? I'm sorry to keep you here, senor. Maybe you'll get tired. No, I'm not tired. <laughs> well, we, we stand up. It's all the same to me. <laughs> Do you like to smoke? I don't smoke. Oh, well, I take one smoke, huh? Go ahead and smoke. Watch your hurry. Hey. 
I reach for the city. Keep that. All right, put him up. Stay where you are and don't make a sound. We have a hanging schedule for this morning, gentlemen. And it's going to take place. Get me out of these. Go away, Dwyer. We'll get down to this. Oh, boy. Well, what's the matter? One of Calhoun's men is holding Dad and Andy at the ranch, prisoners. Well, we we'll go over and get Mason. Now, don't you worry.
Yeah. Too bad, though. He'd have saved us a lot of trouble. What does this mean? It means that Calhoun's heading north with me. He's come to the end of his trail. All right, Mason. I knew you were on my trail. I knew that the Northwest Mounted Police never let up. But I didn't think you'd ever catch me. No. We wanted him for horse stealing. That's a question, Marshal. You've got him and I've got him. Now, who takes him? I think it would be a shame to waste a good rope on him. And being there's my horses he's been stealing, I think I've got some voice in this matter. I say give him to Mason. You win. Thank you, Marshal. So long, Mason. We owe you a vote of thanks. Yes, and more than that. After you've taken your prisoner up north, if you feel like coming back, I'd be mighty glad to see you. Thanks. We sure will. And there's someone else here, I think, has the same thoughts. <laughs> Excuse me, gentlemen. Running away again, eh? I'll teach you, young fellow. Believe me, this is going to hurt me more than it does you. Oh, oh, don't you believe it? Oh, oh! (laughs) 